Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emily, and today I'm excited to discuss with you the life-changing experience of studying abroad. As, a, as someone who is interested in gaining a deeper cultural understanding and personal growth, studying abroad in Japan can provide valuable intercultural experiences and foster personal growth and development. This presentation will provide evidence from research on the benefits of studying abroad and to support the thesis of that studying abroad in Japan can provide individuals with valuable intercultural experiences and foster personal growth and development and enhance their global uh, competence. We will draw from Broskamp's study on developing global culture or global citizens, Dwyer and Peter's research on the benefits of studying abroad, and Honeywell's emphasis on the importance of international education in today's interconnected world. Studying abroad in Japan is an experience like no other, providing individuals with unique and unique, unique cultural insight, personal growth, and global competence, which can serve them well with their personal lives and their professional lives. So sit back, relax, and let's explore life-changing benefits from studying abroad in Japan together. And just so you know, this is actually one of the main buildings of Kansai Gaidai, which is where I studied. So thank you for joining me today for discussing my study abroad experience. My first point I will go over is the development of global citizens. As Russ Gamp notes, global citizens are individuals who, through their thoughts and actions, take responsibility for the well-being of the planet and its inhabitants. In today's interconnected world, it is essential to have a global mindset and desire to learn about diverse cultures and perspectives. One of the most effective ways to foster global education or global citizenship is through education. By learning about other cultures, languages, the way of life, individuals can gain a better understanding and of the world and their place in it. This can be achieved through formal education, such as courses in international studies, or world history, uh, as well as informal education, such as volunteering abroad or participating in cultural exchange programs. Travel is also a great way to promote global citizenship. According to Broskamp, travel can provide opportunities for those personal growth and self-discovery, as well as a commitment to intercultural understanding. Through travel, I was able to experience many different cultural places as well as modern places as well. And then with personal experience, it can also play a significant role in developing global citizenship. This can include volunteering in the local community, participating in environmental conservation efforts, or simply being an active member of a global community. Personal experiences can help individuals develop a sense of empathy and compassion for others, as well as make a commitment in making positive differences in the world. And this can vary from individuals. Next, I'll be talking about the benefits of studying abroad. This picture here is actually when, during the first week weekend that we got in Japan, and this is actually the Osaka Castle. As a person who has had the opportunity to study in, in Japan, I can attest for the positive impact for my personal growth and global citizenship. Um, I will share with you the numerous benefits of studying abroad, both personal and professional. I will also be sharing some of the experiences and trips that I've had in Japan. One of the benefits of studying abroad, as mentioned by Dwyer and Peters, is the development of a greater understanding of another culture and Neuron's perspective of the world. According to Haywell, um, international education exposes students to different cultures, cultures and other worldviews and allows them to develop an intercultural competence and empathy that are important in today's interconnected world. Living in Japan gave me a chance to experience the country's rich culture and history and interact with students all over the world and make new friends which helped me broaden my perspective on different cultures. For example, I made friends who were from Japan. My roommate, she was from Finland, and I knew a couple of people that were from China as well. Another benefit from uh, studying abroad is the development of independence and self-confidence. Peters and Dwyer state that stu uh, students who study abroad often return home with a greater sense of self-confidence and independence as they have successfully navigated a new environment on their own. Studying abroad in Japan allowed me to live on my own and learn to, how to manage my finances and find my way around. 
Trust me, it was not as easy as it sounds. These experiences helped me develop a greater sense of self-confidence and independence. Moreover, studying abroad provides opportunities for personal growth and discovery. According to Dwyer and Peters, uh, students who study abroad often find their experience abroad helps them to develop a greater understanding for their own culture. Living in Japan allowed me to see the world from a totally different pers perspective in a new light. Furthermore, um, being in a new environment and meeting new people allowed me to clarify my goals and values, which is a profound personal growth experience. And next I'll be talking about where I stayed in Japan. Since I've been talking about benefits and study abroad. Where I stayed in Japan was uh, Hirakata Ward, which is located in Osaka, but it's in between um, Osaka and Kyoto. Um, it, it isn't as big as some of these, both of these cities, but it's pretty much like the midpoint of going in between these two cities. So there are a lot of people who live there as well. And these are some of the places where I frequented. I also I tried to travel as much as I could in Japan while I was there, but I couldn't go too far during the weekends since I had to be studying as well. I, where I frequented was Osaka, Osaka, Kyoto, and Nara, because they're the closest to Hirakata. I did get to go to Tokyo three times because um, the first time I went during uh, fall break, second time was just a re weekend trip, and the last time was when I was gonna be there last time. For, from here to Kanto, it took about 20 to 30-ish minutes by train to get to either Osaka or Kyoto, because the Keihan line runs in between, it runs from Osaka to Kyoto, so that was the fastest way to get there. And Nara took a little bit longer, which it took about an hour, 15 minutes-ish, because you had to take the Keihan line to the Kyoto station, and then you had to go on the Kintetsu Kyoto line to go down to Nara area. And then for Tokyo, you had to take the Shinkansen, which cost about 220 for a round trip, and that took about two hours and 30 minutes, which we had to plan accordingly when we got there. Next, I'll be showing some pictures from these locations. This picture here is from the Pokemon Cafe in Osaka. I think it was Namba area, which this is also the Namba area. This is one of the, this is called the Ibitsu Bridge where you can get a picture with this sign. It's very popular, which is what we did. And this is for Kyoto. This is the Fushimi Inari Shrine, which you can see some of the Kitsune statues here. And this is also the part of the Fushimi Inari Shrine. These are the Tori Gates. I think there's like a thousand or something. I can't remember how much. But you can walk through these up to the Inari Mountain, which I didn't go all the way. You could, there was like a halfway point, but it was still pretty cool to see. And this is also part of Kyoto. This is part of the upper part of the city. This was the Arashiyama bamboo forest where there was just a ton of different um, bamboos just shooting up from there. And then this was the Tenuji. Um, it was like a Buddhist temple. I think it was also used as like a tea ceremony place, at least based on the inside. Th but this is like the garden area. And this is like where you walk through some of like the buildings in place. It was really cool. Um, this was Nara. This was the Great Buddha Hall. It, the statue there, it was about 15 meters tall. Um, so you can see, like, this person is as close as you could get to it, so that's, like, huge. And then the Nara Park, it, ha it was no it's known for its friendly deer. You can get really close and even pet them. And this was some, um, some places in Tokyo. This was the Pokemon Mega Center, that, which is located in Ikebukuro, which this is also located in Ikebukuro. It was really cool. Um, this was located in Shibuya, which is the Nintendo World Store. And then my last slide for pictures. This is in Ikebukuro. I just wanted to go to a place that I recognized from one of my favorite anime. It's kind of silly, but it was cool to see real life places. And then these were from some of like the anime cafe and bars. This one was a uh, Dio bar, which is from JoJo. Um, this was just a video game one, and that was actually from a, an aquarium. Okay, and as we begin to wrap up this presentation, I'll be talking about my final topic, which is international education. International education allows students to gain a new perspective on the world and to learn about diverse cultures to improve language skills and develop a global network of friends and connections. And this was my, this is actually my roommate. She was the one from Finland. She was able to wear the yukata. They only had one, so I had to look funny. <laughs> and for global education, one of the most important reasons why this is important is 
because it helps students develop a global mindset and a greater understanding of the world uh, uh, through exposure, exposure to different cultures and ways of life. Uh, students are able to broaden their perspectives to get a greater appreciation for the world and its diverse populations. And then for a new culture and mindset, for me personally, studying abroad has been life-changing, has been a life-changing experience that taught me a lot about myself and the world around me. Living and studying in a foreign country gave me a new perspective to learn about a new culture that has vastly different um, ideas and stuff different from my own. Uh, international culture is important because it helps foster cultural understanding and promote peace and cooperation between nations. By exposing students to different cultures and ways of life, international education helps break down stereotypes and build bridges between people. Um, this is particularly important in today's globalized world, because often you may be seeing about different stuff from different places all around the world, where it's important now than ever to be able to work actively with people from different cultures and backgrounds. Then lastly, lastly of course, it's for improving language skills. Another important aspect, which um, whether a student is studying abroad in a country where they're already fluent in or one where they're learning the new language, living and studying in a foreign country is invaluable because, I mean, where else can you go to like talk with everybody who speaks Japanese that helps you actually focus on l learning and re remembering what you're saying. Like for example, if you say something wrong, people will gently correct you on it so you'll learn how to say it properly in the future. Um, what, one can make great strides in ab language abilities and build a foundation for future language learning. In conclusion, studying abroad in Japan can offer a transformative experience that can shape a person's life and trajectory in numerous ways. Um, thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, this is just my final slide. Um, thank you.